Hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter seven is charge accounts validation. Okay, so if you have downloaded the source code from this book's companion website, you will find a file named chargeaccounts.txt in the chapter seven folder. This file has a list of companies valid charge, charge numbers. Each, each account number is seven. It's a seven digit number, such as this number. Write a program that reads the content of the file into a list. The program should then ask the user to enter a charge account number, number. The program should determine whether the number is valid by searching for it in the list. If the number is in the list, the program should display a message indicating the number is, is valid. If the number is not in the list, the program should display a message indicating that the number is invalid. So it says you can access the book's companion website. All right, so I bought the book from Amazon and I bought it um, without all the companion stuff, basically all the extra stuff. So I don't have that text file, so what we'll end up doing is creating our own text file. So let's do that. I'm going to use text edit. If you're on Mac, you can use text edit. Just make sure that your preferences are set to or set to over here plain text, not not rich text, because rich text will have an extra, extra formatting behind your text, and it's, sometimes it's hard to manipulate, or read and write stuff to it. It can be confusing because you don't see the background stuff. So set it to plain text, and let's create a new document. Because the, pro the question over said, um, so if we have if we have the book, basically the source code um, from this book companion website, you find a file named this this file here, charge account.txt. So we have to create this file and fill it with our own numbers. It says this file has a list of companies valid charge account numbers. Each number is like this. It's a seven digit number such like this. So I'm going to make a copy of this. Um, it didn't say how many charge account numbers are in here, but we are going to just you know, create about maybe 10 or, or you know, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to just paste these numbers in here like this. Oops. So one after the other. Oops. Sorry. So I think that this is, this is enough. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it doesn't really matter. All right. It doesn't really matter. But uh, let's just change this up a little bit, just a little bit. I'm just going to change the beginning and the ending. So um, over here to 1, 1, the beginning and ending here to 2, 2, just so these numbers are different. It's still a seven digits number. So, so this will be our version of our file. So you can go ahead and you should go ahead and do something like this as well. <laughs> All right, so I don't know what I was doing, but that had five there anyway. <laughs> wasn't paying attention. That's funny. Okay. All right, so uh, th these will be our numbers, right? They, they look different. So I'm going to save this. Let's go ahead and save this file. Um, we're going to save it in the same folder where we are going to save, save this program. So when you do that, when you save the file in the same folder where the program is, then they can talk to each other, they can see each other. So when you try to refer to that file, you don't have to specify any path to where the file is because it's right there in the folder with the program. But if you save it somewhere else, then you have to specify to the program where the file is. Okay. <coughs> you have to specify the path uh, to, the pro to the program. Okay. Basically, the path of where the file is to the program. So I'm going to save this file and let's go to where we save our, our programs. In chapter seven, I'm going to create a new folder for this program. I'm going to call it charge account validation. Charge account validation. And then I'm going to save it here as charge account.txt. Just like what the question said, charge account.txt. And then save. So I'll keep this open just so we can refer to it later on. Let's also save this program um, in that same location. So desktop, ch um, charge account validation. In that same location, I'm going to save this as charge account validation.py. Okay. All right, so it says, um, write a program that reads the contents of the file into a list. Okay, so in our main function, what we'll end up doing is, before we start, we'll create a file, we'll open a file, 
um, so in in write mode. So hold on, write a program that reads the contents of the file into it. Or we'll open a file in read mode so we can read from it. All right. So it says so it also goes ahead to say the program should then ask the user to enter a charge account number. So let's break our program into functions. Um, and, if, uh, and the first function we should go ahead and create is a function that's going to ask the user to enter a charge account number to, to be searched. So I'm going to define a function and I'm going to call this um, get, um, get, charge, get, get user charge account number. Get, get user charge account number. This number is going to, is going to be the number we're going to search, um, search for in our, in our file. So get user charge account number. And this function is going to ask the user. So I'm going to call the input function and ask the user to please enter a charge account. Let's just do this. A charge account number to search for. Something like this. Um, all right, so we don't have to convert this. Uh, we don't have to convert whatever the user types. Um, to any number, right? So the input function is going to pop up this message to the user. And, he, and the user is going to type in a charge account number. Now, whatever the user types is going to be returned as a string. So let's just store that in a variable because if it's returning it in a string, we need a place to store it. So let's store it in a variable. I'm going to call this user charge account number. We don't have to go ahead and convert it to an integer or anything like that. We can keep them as, keep them we can keep it as a string. We don't have to. We're just searching for values here. We're not doing any math with it. <coughs> All right, so I don't know if you can see this line over here. This gray line is a guideline for me to not type more than 79 characters on a line. It's a, it's a Python standard not to type um, you know, more than eight, 79 characters on a line, so I want to stick by that. What, what it means is I need to break this line into two. And so I'm going to do that. Um, normally before you break any line into two you type in a backslash but if you type in a backslash in um, the string here you're basically printing out a backslash you don't want to do that so what it means is we need to um, uh, break this into two I'm going to close the string and then concatenate it with the beginning of the string so we have something like this so the same line we're just concatenating two strings oops I concatenated at, a, at, a, at, an, odd at, an, at an odd section so somewhere around here concatenate it with the beginning of the string. Close the string, concatenate it at the beginning of that string. And before I break the line, I'm going to type in a backslash and hit enter. So now I'll have the user charge account number here. Once I have the user charge account number, I'm going to go ahead and return it. Return the user charge account number to whatever section of the, of the program that, um, that, you know, that called this function. All right, so this is the number we're going to search for. All right, the program says, or the question says, the program should determine whether the number is valid by searching for it in the list. It also says something here. Um, let's see. All right, so it says, before that, it says, we should write a program that reads the content of the file into a list. Okay, so let's define a function for that as well. So I'm going to define a function. I'm going to call it read charge account to list. Okay, just so we can know specifically what this function is doing. Reach out accounts to list. What it means is that, it, you know, well, we have to figure out if this function is going to accept any arguments. And yes, because if it's going to reach out accounts to a list, then it needs the file that it, it the file so that it can read the charge account uh, from. And so I'm going to define a parameter here and I'm going to call this um, charge account file. So whoever calls this, this uh, function needs to pass in this argument charge account file <coughs> sorry all right and so what we want to do first of all is to, you know basically so basically what we're going to do is read from this file all right so i'm going to try to explain a few things about files here so we'll be attempting to read from this file i'm going to read the first line from this file the way i do that if I have the charge account file, I can read a line from it. So charge accounts file. Let's just copy. Okay, it's the same thing. 
I can read a line from the you know a particular line from this file by calling read line. So charge accounts file with read line is going to read the first line and return it. And so when it's returning it, we need a place to store it. And so I'm going to store it in a variable called charge account number. Okay. It's going to be a charge account number. So there's one thing about files that uh, you have to uh, take note of. So when you try to open a file for the first time, when you try, when you want to read a, a file, read from a file for the very first time, files have what's called a read position. By default, it starts from the beginning of the of the, of the basically any text of this file right here. And so when any time you call read line, this particular uh, method, it reads the line, it returns that value, stores it in, it's going to store it in charge account number, but it then moves the read position from the end of this line to the next line. And so the next time you call read line, it's going to read this line. It automatically does that, and it's going to move the position from the end of this line to the next line, okay? So it, it automatically moves the read position. If you call read line again, so if you call read line again, it's going to read the third line and move automatically move the position from the end of the third line to the, to the beginning of the fourth line. So, th so that's how it works. So if we read the very first line, it reads this number and stores it here. And then it's going to read the, uh, move the position to the next line, be the beginning of the next line, until you call read line again. Now if you call read line and it returns an empty string, that means you've reached the end of the line. So if it reaches here and you call read line, it reads this line, it's going to move the position to the e from the end of this line to the beginning of the next line. But if you call read line again, it's going to read nothing. Basically, it's going to return an empty string. If it returns an empty string, it's an indication that you've reached the end of the file.